When things don't go your way, are you one of those people that says, well, that's the way the ball bounces? If that's the case, you really need to pay attention today. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. And we are in the midst of going over how the ball bounces the way you want it to bounce if you do things the right way. We're taking a look at some lessons, some life lessons that we can learn from basketball. And I am not saying that's the only venue where you learn life lessons, but it's one of the ones that I'm most familiar with and it's one of the ones that my son is attached to. So I felt it might be a pretty good platform to describe some, of, some life lessons and at the same time, once again, you don't have to be Mr. Basketball to be able to uh, take some good stuff from this because it's it, not very deep with basketball information. So anyway, let's get right to it. All right, first thing we want to talk about, uh, one of the basic premises when I'm coaching a team is for them to realize that offense is a reaction to defense. What does that mean? That means that very often, you know, we'll set up a play for our team that we want them to run to try and score a basket. But it all depends on how the other team, the defending team, responds to it. So as an example, one of the, if, if, if the play starts off where, you, where you're passing the ball from, let's say, the middle of the court to one side of the court, if the defender on of the guy that you want to pass the ball to is denying the pass is like standing out in the passing lane what do you do all right well offense reacts to defense so what do you do you give the guy one of these you know you make a fake and then the guy comes out and, and tries to make the steal and then you cut back door and so sometimes you have to cut back door you have to go where the opening is Another example, offense reacts to defense. Let's say you're playing and you're one, the guy, the dribbler has the ball and he's running using a screen set by a big guy. All right, so the big guy is covered by another big guy and the guy with the ball is point guard usually is shorter. So they set the screen so the first big guy on defense has to switch and cover the little guy now. So there's an advantage, the little guy has quickness. He's quicker than the, than the bigger guy. And on the other hand, uh, then the big guy that sets the screen goes to the basket. Now he's covered by a small guy. You can take the ball and throw it. That's the basic for the basis for one of the most basic plays in basketball known as the pick and roll. And the pick and roll runs, if you ever watch it, watch it when they're playing basketball, it depends on how the defense responds to it, how they react to it. And when you see that, so offense is a reaction to defense. You have to understand how things work. Now, in life, as an example, uh, one of the things when we were training people to, let's say, go into a home, and I've gone over this before, is we always role play. So we would role play, let's say we're, we're knocking on doors to get into a home so we can make a presentation. All right, so we knock on the door, and then we have somebody pretending to be a customer and that person is role playing and the person that's trying to get into the house in the role play has to respond to the way the person at the door is acting so it's offense is reacting is a reaction to defense so how people respond and respond to you in certain scenarios determines your next action so you have to be prepared to for all different types of responses you're going to get from people that you come in contact with in business so offense is a reaction to defense next thing we want to talk about is building a tribe what is building a tribe building a tribe is finding people that think and feel about a particular subject a particular worthwhile burning of burning desire objective that they feel the same way about it as you do. I've given examples of that on this channel as far as basketball is concerned. After we, you know, the, when I was coaching 
and our high schools, all the high schools played on the same day, so they would have a game on Tuesday, and they would have a game on Tuesday night and Friday night. All right, so when, after the game, all the coaches would gather in this particular watering hall, hole and go over the games and talk about the players. And these guys were all rivals, were all you know, competitors, but at the same time, we're all members of the same tribe. We're all members of the coaching community. So we sit down, we get together, and we go over stuff. Same thing is true in business. You want to find people that think as you think, that want to achieve the same objectives that you want to achieve. You know, when, when we used to have these tremendous trips that we would go on, uh, you know, we'd have a certain level of production you had to achieve, and once you achieved it, then you qualified for a fabulous trip. You know, you could go, to, we went to Rio one year, went to Canada one year, went to the Bahamas one year, went to the, the, uh, the Far East one year, we went all these different places, went to Europe, you know, some great trips. When you go there and you're either on the plane going or you're actually there in a restaurant eating with somebody, you're looking for people that are doing the same thing in business that you're doing. So you talk with them, you learn from them. They have the same dreams, desires, and motivations that you do in terms of achieving a certain level of production, of success. Sit down with people, get their nuances, share your nuances. Become a member of a tribe. That's what separates you. It separates the 5% from the 95%, the tribe members. Does that make sense? Exploit opponents' weaknesses. Well, my goodness. You know, one of the things that we would do, um, you know, when you're playing basketball, of course, is if you had one particular player that was slow and you had a guy that was fast, you kind of clear out and let him take him to school. All right? I mean, that's just one simple example. Or if you had one guy that was very, very tall and you put him down in the basket and the other team didn't have somebody to cover him, you try and get the ball into him. Why? He can see over and make the basket easier. I mean, these are different things that you, ex you know, explode, exploiting your opponent's weaknesses. And you keep going until they figure out a way to stop it. And then you try and figure out a new way to take advantage of that. In business, Hey, we're, you see that all the time. One example of that, uh, a real easy one, is Netflix. What was the weakness of their opponents? Their particular opponents were the video stores. So what, do you, what, was, what did they look at as a weakness? They said, well, you have to get up off your couch, get into your car, go to the video store, and that takes time. That took, takes effort, as opposed to sitting on your couch and just going through the various movies, picking one out. They exploited the weakness of their opponent. Does that make sense? You're seeing that happening right now today in terms of you know businesses wanting to get together. This company Zoom that you know puts people together online. You know, before this pandemic, you know, they would still do that, but they've really come to the forefront now that we are social distancing. We still want to have meetings, all right, but hey we can't do them in person for obvious reasons so they have exploited the weakness of the opponent which in, in this case was the fact that people could sit eyeball to eyeball in a group so they've exploited that weakness so when you're in a business when you're developing a product one of the things is you either make things better for people easier for people or you're solving an issue it's, it's, it's that simple. And that's exploiting the opponent's weaknesses or the scenario that you're faced with. Passing the ball with the proper touch. Being on time and on target. You know, one of the things as a basketball player, and, and I didn't have a whole lot of good strengths. I did have one good strength, though. This was the one good strength that I had. I had the ability of passing the ball to someone in a scoring position and putting it in exactly the right place. If you have a big guy running to the basket without any defender to stop him and you throw the ball down low at his feet, you know what? That makes things difficult. You want to get the ball 
in the position where the guy can take it in stride and just lay it up in rhythm and in stride on time and on target that's what we're talking about well the same thing apply and and if you're not on time on target I mean you, you see that sometimes there's like uh, a big guy standing in there's a guy standing in front of a player that you want to get the ball to well if you take the ball and you just throw it well the guys gonna block it if you take it and you put an arc on it and loft it over the first person's head then the guy is in a position to hold his ground stick his arm out and when the ball comes down make the catch on time on target it, it requires a certain touch the same thing is true in life the same thing is true in business you know there were certain times when Eli to be very frank with you I really want to yell and scream at you but I have to say to myself is that going to help me to achieve the things that I want to achieve is that helping me to get the lesson across that needs to be taught to make the correction that I want to make because a lot of times when you do that people don't hear the solution what they hear is the way that you're talking to them so and of course the other thing is you want to address issues as they happen but you want to address them in such a way that the people receiving the feedback are able to take it from a from a positive posture so as an example in the workplace one of the things we've talked about is it's usually a good idea when you're making a correction to use a softening statement first let me give you an example of that okay hey Fred you know I'm taking a look at what you're doing right now and you know I've, I've seen the stuff that you've done before the last time that we did a project together you did this unbelievably well and you did that unbelievably well and you got it done you know within the time frame that we were looking for so I've come to expect that kind of excellence Fred when I give you an assignment so can we take a look at what you need on what's going on right now I see that we're a little bit behind why are we behind maybe I can help you with making a few suggestions you might want to do this and this and this because I know that you're you know dedicated to what you do I've seen it in your past work I want to see it in this work also can we work together on that so you make a softening statement you get you tell the person so that they are you're working with them as a team and they feel that you're working with them as a team does that make some sense okay now next thing we want to talk about in terms of you know we talked about on time on target is experience you know I'll give you an example about experience I was talking to uh, a lady that had a meeting with I mean she was part of the the union and so the union was having a meeting with management okay it was a labor management meeting and so the so the, the lady that represented the union was talking to the management person and just was getting frustrated 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 and the ma because the management person kept saying well why should we do this why should we do that so on and so forth and I pointed out to her, I said, here's a rule that you have to learn, and you learn this from experience. The person that's asking the questions is the one that's in control of the situation. Because you can make a person nod their head. Isn't that right? Do you see that? Does that make sense? So when you're in a confrontational situation, it's more advantageous to be the person that's asking the questions because that's the person that's in control. And, I'm, and that's just one example of quote unquote experience. Of course, in a basketball game, you know, if you have, you know, a senior and a junior uh, in the game that are both pretty good shooters, you get the ball to the senior. Why? The senior has played more games. The senior has been there more times. The senior is more comfortable with the conflict, with the situation that's right in front. I mean, you make those particular judgments. And, it, and experience really, really counts. People that have been there and done that 
it's a, a deja vu experience. Make sure that you take advantage of that and make sure that you have experiences yourself. And what, you know, we always say that good judgment comes from bad judgment and bad judgment comes from experience. Does that make sense? So if you've had those experiences, then you're in a better position to offer advice or to perform the function itself. Overcoming failures. You know, in a basketball game, if you, you took a shot and you missed and then you just hung your head the whole time, I mean, how many times, Eli, have we seen, you know, one of my favorite players, I know one of your favorite players, Steph Curry, you know, the little guy that can shoot the lights out, you know, he goes the first half and he's held to no three-point shots and maybe one basket in the first half, and he comes out in the second half, and like he's got no conscience whatsoever. Why? Because the identity that Steph Curry has for himself is, I'm a shooter. That's my identity. And I'm an assassin. When I get the ball, I'm going to kill the other team because I have the ability to do that. That's my identity. He's able to overcome his failures by putting it behind him. A different way of expressing that, uh, because people in life, a lot of times, they let their past experiences hinder what they have to do in the present and also in the future. Always remember that when you're driving a car, the rear view mirror is about this big and the windshield is about that big, which indicates that you should be looking in your rear view about that amount of time and you should be looking forward about that amount of time. Does that make sense? And it greatly, if, if you focus on past failures, you've got to get, take those and get them out of your mind. You've got to have an eraser that just erases that negative feeling from your mind if you want to move forward. You always have to be positive. Next one I want to talk about is intensity. When you are performing a function, you, and we're talking physical now, you want to have an intensity. Now, sometimes intensity also means to do something with finesse. We were talking about taking a ball and passing it over the outstretched arm of a defender in a basketball game. Well, you're not doing, you're not taking the ball and whipping it, throwing it real hard. What you're doing is you're showing some finesse. But you're doing that with intensity because you've, you're working on it and you're saying, how can I get the ball? How can I get the ball to him? How can I get the ball to him? And you figure it out. Or another way, sometimes, you know, there's, you know, arms and legs always in the way. So what do you do? You take the ball and you throw a bounce pass. But you've got to make sure that the person on the other end of the bounce pass is someone that's able to receive the bounce pass. So you have to make sure that when you're performing a function with another person that A, you have the proper intensity and B, they have the intensity needed to be able to receive what it is you're trying to give them when you're passing them the ball. They have to have that intensity as well. Of course, that's you know true in life. You don't want to give a major project to somebody that you know, just comes in and is kind of a nine to five person, says, well, you know, that's not in my contract, or, you know, I work nine to five, or I'm watching the clock. If they're focused on time instead of focused on results. So make sure that your most difficult projects you give to yourself and you perform them with the proper intensity, or you're laddering, lateraling the ball to someone else that already possesses the proper intensity to move your scenario forward. So intensity is important. Last one we're going to talk about today is regeneration. During a basketball game, Eli, the coach is going to say, all right, Freddie, go in for Eli, all right? He's going to take you out and put you on the bench. And when you're on the bench, what is it that you do? You don't grab your phone and start seeing if you have any emails or if somebody Snapchatted you. What you're doing is you're sitting on the bench and you're regenerating and you're not particularly focused on any other activity except the game right in front of you. So you're watching the game, but you're relaxing, you're regenerating, and you're putting yourself in a position to get back out there so that you can win the game. 
that's something that you want to take with you in life. I've gone over this before. You work for a certain length of time, and it depends. It's, it, it's a muscle. You know, I mean, you, you start off it's just like you're training for a marathon. You know, the first day, you, maybe you'll run a mile. And then, you know, three weeks later, now you maybe get that up to five miles because you've been able to increase what you've done through practice, all right? You've built up your endurance. You've built up your stamina, all right? But it, what we're talking about in terms of regeneration, so let's suppose that you're working and you're giving really strong focus time for two particular hours that you're blotting out and you're saying, you know what, I'm going to work for two hours, then I'm going to take a small break and regenerate. That gives your brain a chance to reset. It gives your blood a chance to reset, all right, so that you come back with additional strength. But when you're doing that rest period, that regeneration period, that's not, the, if you're going to go back to work, all right, if you're going to go back to that same project, that's not the time to start something new, even as simple as checking your emails or checking your Snapchats or seeing if you got any phone calls. That's the time when you want to still keep a focus on the game like you're sitting on the bench and allow your muscles, your brains, your physical muscles and your mental muscles to regenerate so that when the coach says, hey, Eli, go check in for Freddie again, you go back in the game and now you're back at full strength. Does that make sense? Because when you start to do something else, it affects your brain and your brain has to like stop what that is and then go back to what you were doing instead of if you're just regenerating your brain will stay on that same wavelength and you will be more productive and because we will never end a meeting on a philosophical note why don't you get out there and charge i'm eli's dad